Okay, guys. Uh, this is Roni55. Um, I haven't been on here making YouTube videos forever. It's literally been eight months, I think, or longer. Don't look at my last YouTube video to figure that out. So, uh, today I'm back, and, uh, I'm sorry that the video is kind of crappy quality. Um, bear with me. I'm using a digital camera just because, um, I don't have the video making stuff on my computer anymore. And I've just been really too lazy to go and find more movie software crap. So, here we are. Um, basically, I just got done at two video game swaps. We have the Waterloo swap. And we have CGCC, which is in Kitchener. And um, both were, were awesome. I picked up some really good finds. And uh, I've got a, a few gems, which I'm going to save for the end of the video. But uh, let's get into the nitty gritty. With Let's start out with the shittiest first. So, we have uh, a Japanese version of Pokemon Crystal. Now... I gotta say, I like this design a lot better than the, the North American version. Just because it's got this funky-ass thing on the back that's like Suicune's head. It's like, it, I like that they actually add some detail to this shit. It's like it comes to North America, and someone just, like, doesn't give a flying fuck about it, puts it on, like, a, in a warehouse, in a factory, and they're just like, alright, let's pump out a bunch of these and not give a shit what they look like. I mean... They're doing that in Japan as well, obviously, but at least they took that one extra step in the factory and they're like, yeah, we're going to put some cool shit on the back of this for our, our loyal customers that enjoy that. So, basically, I'm really enjoying playing through the, the Japanese versions of these uh, just because I've, I've played the original so much that it's actually uh, starting to make me nauseous when I play them. Like, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm playing through this again. It's it's literally the 60th time. So, I don't know, I'm having fun basically not being able to read any of the any of the attacks, not being able to read any of the names. I mean, it's just really spectacular. That's how I like to roll when I play video games. I like to not know what the fuck is happening, ever. So, Let's move on to our next thing. Uh, this is actually a really cool action figure uh, that I picked up. And I don't really pick up that many of these, but uh, I'm doing up a game room, finally, and I will make a YouTube video of it once it's done. Um, my couch is on order, and it's going to take six weeks to get here, so I'm not going to make it until the couch gets here because... The couch is a badass. Like, it has cup holders, and it's electric. It just makes that shit awesome. So, anyways, uh, back to my back to my crap here. Um, so this is Ganondorf's horse um, from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And basically, like, these are, these are actually really hard to come by. And I remember back in the day, I mean, I have a, a Link um, action figure that's basically the same concept as this. And uh, Link is riding his horse. And I got it for 14 bucks back in the day at a, at a Toys R Us. My grandma actually bought it for me. And, um, you know, now these are going for upwards of, of 45 to $50. So I just thought this was really cool. Um, I ended up trading for a, a Super Nintendo cleaning set uh, for this action figure. And that's not it. Obviously, I wouldn't trade for it if uh, it didn't have Ganondorf with it. So, look at how ugly he is. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so, yeah, I got, I got Ganondorf with it. Um, he has a really hard time sitting on his horse. And uh, I'm, I'm not skilled enough to actually get him on his horse. Uh, I have to get my roommate to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. Other than that, I thought that that was a really cool find. Uh, so swap for a SNES cleaning kit. Can't go wrong with that. And let's get into let's get into the really good shit now. So basically, uh, I've been focused a lot on Nintendo Entertainment System recently. And as you all know, uh, my first consoles were uh, my my home console was the N64, and my handheld console was the Game Boy Color. So basically NES and Super Nintendo are, they're really foreign to me just because 
Super Nintendo, not so much, just because I've gotten more into it, but NES has always been foreign to me. You've never really seen me have NES games in a video. So, I figured, you know, I really should start expanding my collection for this system, because there are a lot of really awesome games. So, I mean, the only thing that I find with NES is that it's insanely expensive for the really good games. I mean, you've got games like the, the Flintstones, Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. That's like a $400 game because it was a blockbuster exclusive. You've got Little Samson, which had such a low production run that it now goes for around $600. Like, <clears throat> I just find that if, if you're one of those people, <clears throat> pardon me, if you're one of those people that really want to complete your collection and, and you're going to be like, insane and try and collect all the NES games at like 700 and something titles in the, in the library. It, <laughs> good luck. Um, and then also we have stadium events, which is like, it's like $20,000 for stadium events. And it's the exact same thing as like track and field or something like that. Bo boggles my mind. Boggles my mind. But anyways, um, I picked up some of the the lesser uh, expensive titles. There's one me moderately expensive title in here, so let's let's just get to it. So first off, we have Balloon Fight, and if you've never played this game, uh, you need you seriously need to download um, a virtual console of it. It's now out on the Wii U. Uh, you could get it on your on your 3DS. Um, just an awesome game. Literally one of my favorites. Uh, the first time I actually discovered this game was through Animal Crossing, the GameCube version, where you could have uh, the little NES consoles in your house. And I had Excitebike and Balloon Fight. And I remember just playing copious amounts of Balloon Fight. So uh, I really like Balloon Trip on this. It's a, it's a great addition to the actual game. And uh, I really suck ass at it. I mean, it's been literally 10 years I've been playing this shit, and I've still never, ever, ever beat the high score on Balloon Trip, which is like 25,000. It's bullshit. But, uh, yeah, anyways, we'll move on. <coughs> River City Ransom. Uh, this one's are around 25 to 30 bucks. It's so, I mean, it's kind of expensive for what it is, which is a really old... 1985 Nintendo game, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's a gem, and a lot of people told me that, you know, I had to pick this one up, and blah, 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 so, uh, you know, the guy I'm living with was just like, oh, okay, he's like, well, he's like, let's just add it to the collection, and I'm like, all right, let's do it, so we ended up picking it up, and it's really fun, it's really, it's really fucking awesome, guys, if you're looking for a sick, like, beat-em-up game, um, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, that's a sweet game as well, but i got to be honest, I really like I really like River City Ransom a lot more. And again, that's personal opinion, so don't don't be hating on me in the comments. But uh, just, just an awesome game. Literally, you can pick up a bunch of shit, you can throw it at people, you can, like, you can have, like, whips and stuff and murder people. Like, it's, it's super fun. And your guy's a little badass. Like, he just walks around, he's like, yeah, what's up? So, I, I really like it. Good, good choice. Now, we have Bubble Bobble. So, basically, none of these are really, uh, these aren't really too rare, okay? Bubble Bobble's just really fucking fun. I mean, you're a cute little dinosaur, and you shoot bubbles, and the enemies turn into fruit, okay? Like, I don't know what acid trip game designer thought of this shit, but seriously, it's literally the best concept ever. And Bubble Bobble's still going today, actually. There's a, there's a Nintendo DS version of it. So if you're curious, I would try to pick that one up. But uh, really, really great game again. Um, probably one of my favorite two-player games on the system. So if, if you're looking for something fun to do with your buddies and you just want to get, you know, moderately frustrated, Bubble Bobble would be a good choice. Now... Here's my last two items, and these are kind of the gems of the video. Uh, first off, we have Snow Brothers for the NES. And this is actually a, a pretty expensive game as of right now. Um, the lowest one on eBay is around $170.
And this honestly just keeps gaining value every single year. Here, I'll let you look at it a little closer there. So this one's mint condition. Um, I picked this up for a, a relatively good price for what it is. Uh, I didn't pay $170 for it. <laughs> that was not happening. But um, literally, this is one of my favorite NES games. Um, this, and if I could have Little Samson, which I won't, unless you're like the game chasers and you go find it for $5 at a flea market, I wish, um, then you're not going to have it unless you want to spend a ridiculous amount on eBay. So I figured, well, I'll pick up this one for the collection because it's, you know, it's under 200 bucks and it's, it's not too bad. But, uh, if you can find this for, for under $100, definitely pick it up because it's, one of the best two-player games, and honestly, it's just a really fun one-player game as well. So I would definitely check out maybe a uh, YouTube video of that one, because, you know, you guys are all just sitting on YouTube watching this horrible bullshit, so you obviously have time to go do that. And yeah, pick it up if, if you find it, because it's a sweet one. Now, here we go. We have the, uh, the gem here of the day. We have Conker's Bad Fur Day complete in the box. Now, the box isn't in the greatest condition, yeah, I'll admit, but you know what? For this game, which is now retailing for almost, almost $120 for a cartridge only of it, I mean, you can't go wrong for what I paid for this for a, uh, a box version. I paid a hundred bucks for a complete in box version. So I'm going to just open this up here really quick and let you see all the, the magic. So basically here is the cartridge right there. And Conker's Bad Fur Day is one of those games where you will have, you will never have another release quite like this because uh, Rare actually did this game, and they're the same people who obviously made Donkey Kong Country and all of that good stuff, and Banjo, Banjo-Kazooie, and Banjo-Tooie. Anyways, it plays kind of like those games, but what's uh, horribly addictive and hilarious about this game is that you play as a drunken squirrel. Now, I'm not one to complain about drunken things in video games. And this is just one of those games that's so foul, you wonder how it ever got released. And, uh, I fucking love it. It's dirty. It's dirty and I love it. So, um, Conker is your little drunken squirrel, and he walks around and you can, you know, he drinks some booze, and you meet, you meet these weird characters. You meet, like, a giant monster made out of shit, and you make, uh, you meet... This queen bee, which is really cute and fluffy. Then uh, you also meet a lot of other creatures, like there's douchey hermit crabs. You meet them. And uh, a bunch of other stuff. So, I mean, if you're just looking for something that's absolutely vile to play on your N64, I would definitely pick up Conker's Bad Fur Day. Because you just don't get any more fucked up than that. And for back in the day, I have no idea how that got released.